This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is our favorite show, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum show on Wednesday at four every week. I love it. And I love it even on a day with a hurricane because somehow it puts things in different perspective when you're dealing with the nature, mother nature, who is sometimes offended. <laughs> okay, we have to my left, we have uh, Lauren Reichelt with Blue Planet Foundation. And then to her left, we have Brennan Morioka with Wine Electric. And to his left, uh, we have Greg Gog, and he's with Ulupono Initiative. This is a really VIP show. <laughs> Smile. Because you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what are we going to talk about? Of course, electrification of transportation today. It's very important. And uh, we have to, you know, have to keep pushing forward on it. It doesn't sound right, pushing, when you talk about transportation, but hey. And it's about electrification. It's about bringing the whole piece together. It's about changing the way people feel about their transportation, their rides. Yeah. So there's a big thing coming up. Uh, who wants to talk about it first? Who's in charge? Talk about National Drive Electric Week. Yeah, that so, one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, All right. uh, National Drive Electric Week is September eighth to September sixteenth, and it's a nationwide celebration of electrified transit or transportation. Um, and so, it's really an awareness event. We're um, trying to increase awareness of the various plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles that exist and their environmental and um, financial benefits. Okay. So, how is this being conducted on the mainland? How is it being conducted here, and is it the same in both places? Yeah, it's there's sort of an umbrella organization that um, encourages a lot of localized events. So there are events going on all over, car shows and ride and drive events. Here we have a number of events. Um, there were there was an EV fair last weekend and an EV ride and drive event, and then this upcoming weekend there's another EV ride and drive event on Kauai and one on Big Island as well in Hilo. So. It's just like everybody gets his electric car and drives. Like, you know, they used yeah. to have this with the Model T Ford years ago, right? Everybody drives across the country with their Model T, you know, and they help each other when they need to. And all it's that. more about exposure for folks who don't already own an electric vehicle. So uh, sales associates will bring the cars that they have for sale, the electric vehicles, and um, the public can come in and test drive them in a really pressure-free environment, and also get in multiple models at once and be able to compare them on the spot. Oh, this is good. So yeah. it's, it's a showroom of sorts. It is. And maybe I can, uh, you know, finally get my wife to agree to get an electric car this way. There I should go. take her. Yeah, I'll know, send you the information. Uh, so <laughs> are the rest of you guys, Brendan, are you involved in this electrification program that's coming up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, all of us here um, partner on a number of different activities. Um, we are also a part of Drive Electric Hawaii, which is a coalition of, of organizations, both on the private sector, uh, advocacy groups like Blue Planet and, and Ulupono Initiative, um, all of the utilities, and then a number of state government and county government aid entities as well. And it's, it's really uh, an effort by us to provide educational opportunities for the general public or for people who have been looking at, at buying an EV um, and maybe are on the fence. The ride and drive or EV fares are opportunities for them to actually kind of touch and feel, uh, test it out and, and just to kind of ask a lot more questions that they maybe just can't find online or somewhere else. So uh, these face-to-face these -face kind of opportunities are, are very vital in, in the outreach and educational aspects of uh, electrification of transportation, getting people to consider buying an electric vehicle and so it's been very successful. Hawaiian Electric um, has partnered with a number of, of these organizations um, on these events that we did for National Drive Electric Week but also on a fairly regular basis. We also had an event at the University of Hawaii football game uh, last weekend versus Rice which was a very successful not just uh, game, but also event because <laughs> one you know, fed the other. Yeah, yeah uh, you know we're right there in front of the gate entry in one of the one of the entry points, and there's a lot of people who just come by, and we have we're a number of uh, of vendors that are surrounding us, but you know we get a good share of that audience, and uh, people ask really good questions, and so you know we're, we're we're there to just provide that kind of opportunity to have a conversation with them. You're involved too, Greg. Yeah, we've been uh, supportive, and like Brandon said, partnered with with both Blue Planet and. HECO and other stakeholders to try to move this forward, right? I mean, you know, transportation in general, 
uh, is our larger cons consumer of imported oils. Sure. And ground transportation is, is a big component of that. So this is very important for us in terms of how do we reduce our dependence on imported oils. And uh, EVs and electrification of transportation uh, is a good way to do that. It's a viable technology right now. There's more and more options coming out with with uh, you know auto manufacturers, and so part of the challenge is there's a lot of misperceptions, a lot of uh, you know lack of information out there, and so these events are are meant to get some of you know inform people, whether from the dealers or or private you know parties like us, to go out there and share information, and, and like Lauren said, in a non kind of sales environment, uh, to educate, inform people, and hopefully you know get get them to to better understand what it, you know electric vehicles are all about, what they can do, what they can't do. Um, and hopefully ease their mind so when they go to purchase a new vehicle uh, next time they really consider an electric and ideally they, they choose an electric whether it's 100% battery electric or even just a, a plug-in hybrid that you know maybe gets 30 to 50 miles a range on the battery which for most people would cover you know all their daily needs. And you needs. support that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean anything anything to, to reduce you know the consumption of oil. Well let me ask you a question about that. I mean I'm really putting it to all three of you. Is <clears throat> to the extent that we're still using oil and creating the electrical energy that mm -hmm. feeds these cars, they're not completely green. They're partly green and they're partly not green. <laughs> what, what do you say to people when they, maybe when you go have this program and everybody right. shows yeah. up, no, what are you going to say to them? And that's a very valid question and it's a very valid point. Um, but, you know, as, as the utilities across the state transition towards 100% renewable portfolio, you know, that energy that is used to power these cars start to become cleaner and cleaner. As compared to if you have a, just a regular gasoline car, that, that will continually be, you know, uh, providing carbon emissions that is just going to continue to con contribute to towards, you know, uh, an environment that is just not as clean as it could be. So, yeah. you know, so even though it may not be as clean today as it will be tomorrow, I think, you know, putting all the right pieces in place uh, will put us on the right path and, 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 and going towards that I think is very important especially not just towards a cleaner environment but also towards the energy security right. aspects that, that Greg was alluding to. And to build up on that right and as of 2017 I think statewide or at least maybe through the, the Hawaii Electric Companies it was about 27 mm percent -hmm. renewable energy. So right off the bat a quarter of your fuel or a little bit more Which than a quarter than most other is places. renewable. Right. Yeah it is renewable driving your vehicle but a key aspect whether it's you know, it's still fossil fuels versus, you know, gasoline at the pump. Uh, it's more efficient to go through the, the utility, and because of that, you're going to save money. Uh, so although gasoline is expensive here, um, as is electricity, you know, on average, you, you could save, you know, a third to even two-thirds uh, the cost of fuel for an electric vehicle versus a gasoline-powered vehicle, regardless, even though we're only 25 to 30 percent renewable energy. Uh, and also, I would, I would add this thought that there's a mindfulness issue. If I go out and buy an electric car, I'm making a statement, not only to my friends and family, but to myself. You know, when I'm, I'm committing, I'm committing to this. And so I'm more likely to be a guy who has solar on the roof. I'm more likely to be somebody who supports green energy in general if I am supporting green energy for the electric car. Yeah. Well, and then I hear stories of people who buy the plug-in hybrid, and then because they do that, it's almost like a challenge to themselves. They make it a gain, like, how how much can I drive only on electric this week? And then yeah, yeah. in the end, it's practically used as a fully electric car because they maximize their battery use. It must do something to you when you're driving down the street. You see all those stats coming up on the dash. Exactly how well am I doing right now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, Jay, and you bring up a good point, but that... The, you know, participating in, in having a cleaner environment is, is one thing, and that was really the, the motivation of many of the early adopters. But, you know, as electric vehicle technology has improved, it really starts to become more about cost savings for the individual consumer, but also just owning a better car. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, as the price of the vehicle comes down and, the, and it does become more affordable, you know, the Leafs and the, and the, the Volts and the Bolts, uh, and even the new Tesla, the Tesla 3, which is, it's still expensive, but it, it is becoming more and more affordable. But the vehicles are probably the most, I mean, I, I own a Leaf, and it's probably the best handling vehicle that I have ever owned. Ah, and I want to talk about that, yeah. So you say it, it's a better car. And Absolutely. so And then we put aside the fact that it's an electric car. Just put that aside for a minute. Handling, okay, the, what the sound the door makes when it closes, right? All that, that solid feeling. Especially when they're new. 
Especially when <laughs> yes. you're new, right? And they're not I creaky. Mean, I mean, if you're going to put a lot of technology into a vehicle, you, you're not going to put it just into the, you know, the electric system. Right. You're going to put it into everything, because otherwise, you know, it'd be, you're cheating yourself as a manufacturer. So, tell me, how good are they? I mean, are they well, are they way better than my Toyota truck? They're they're phenomenal. Uh, Are you asking a trick question? Yeah, <laughs> it's not apple apples there, but they're they're phenomenal. And to be honest, I mean, we, uh, my wife and I, and we have two small kids, uh, which means two car seats. We have a Leaf. We have you know plenty of room in there for the car seats, for the kids, for the strollers, everything. We need. It's a very family friendly car. Uh, and we got our first one about four years ago. And what really sold me, and right, I'm an advocate for this, was the test drive. I mean, as Brandon said, you get in there, test drive it, and it is it is a very smooth. A uh, very sound vehicle. The acceleration is is beyond most traditional cars. Phenomenal. Because yeah. um, it's a 100% torque almost from the start, uh, and that's what really got me. And it's quiet. What about being too quiet? You know, when I was a kid, I rode my bike around the street, <laughs> and I had a playing card. Yep. You know, from a deck of cards mm -hmm. and a clothespin. Mm -hmm. You're too young for this. Now. No, I know exactly. <laughs> <what you're talking laughs> <about>. <laughs> it's just so it would make a little noise. It's almost like maybe for an extra, you know, plug in that makes a little noise. Yeah. You know. So the, the, uh, the Leaf actually has a very distinct noise that it makes uh, where if you, as soon as you kind of get attuned to it, like, I mean, I, if I'm walking around and I, you know, just hear a car coming, I know instantly if it's a Leaf or not because of the unique noise that it makes. So they, they do make they do some noise. Not. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's not, you know, the rumbling, like, V8 engine uh, that, that some of us might be used to, but they, they do make some noise. Uh, so what, what are the products that are in the marketplace now that I should consider? I go down to this uh, celebration. What, what should I be looking at? I mean, I like the Tesla, but what else? I mean, is is uh, I, you know we talk. I think we talked about this before about the Leaf, how it came out, and there was a special mm, discount or rebate mm -hmm. going on just about a year ago, as I recall, uh, and that was very attractive. And I knew some guys who bought that car. They have been in love with it ever since, and the price. Mm -hmm. They were in love with the price. Yep. So what should I be looking at? Uh, the Toyota, uh, the Tesla, the What's the so uh, um, yeah, almost every manufacturer at this point is either in the process of creating a plug-in or already has one on the market. And so, um, Kia, for example, just released their Kia Nero, which is a plug-in hybrid. Saw that at the, the the car show. That was a very nice looking mm -hmm. car. Yeah, I haven't driven that one yet, but that's the next one on my list. Um, and we have the Chevy Bolt has probably the longest range, um, two hundred and thirty-eight mile range on one charge. Um, and people really love that car as well. It was rated as one of the best cars in production right now, mm -hmm. um, aside from being electric. And we have the Nissan Leaf, which everyone knows about. There's also some minivans that are being released. Um, minivans. Oh. The Chrysler Pacifica. 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 The plug-in uh, hybrid. Plug -in hybrid. Plenty of choices. BMW. Yep. Mitsubishi um, released. A, it's a crossover. It's an Outlander. The Outlander. Yeah, Mitsubishi Outlander. Wow, they're everywhere yeah. now. So they're starting Honda. to get bigger. The argument that my family can't fit in it, those, those things are sort of starting to melt away a little yeah. and ease people's minds. And I think trucks are probably going to be next. I think once we get the, the forerunners, it's a game changer. Then the Toyota truck turns into the Toyota Absolutely. electric there's, truck. There's a, there's a company called Workhorse that has a yeah. full-size truck uh, out there that sells, right. I think right now it sells for about 55000 uh, it's not fully commercialized yet, but you know, as as it hits the market, I think in 2019, 2020, and the price becomes uh, much more affordable, I think you're going to start seeing people make that switch. I mean, yeah. trucks is really the tipping point for Hawaii. I think you know, we, we yeah, everybody loves the Toyota cars, Tacoma right? is is the most popular vehicle purchased in in Hawaii, even more so as you go to the neighbor islands. You know, the 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 shift towards trucks becomes even more prevalent. So. You know, as, as you start getting the different models coming online, especially the larger SUVs and the trucks, I think that's when you start really start seeing a shift, and that's in a, in a couple of years from now. So what about that hydrogen car? Mirai, was it? Mm -hmm. um, where does oh, yeah, that fit in this discussion, in this landscape? Where does that fit? Well, hydrogen fuel cell is, is another version of electric vehicles. I mean, it, it's, it's an electric car, um, but you don't plug it in. It, you fuel it by um, hydrogen produced in various forms. Um, the Mirai is, is one of the models that are out there right now. Um, there's also some larger trucks uh, that are fueled by hydrogen, uh, including buses. The, one of the, the challenges with, with hydrogen fuel cell right now is just the cost of infrastructure. It, it's extremely expensive to produce the Still hydrogen. Still 50,000 plus. Huh? Yeah, so it's, um, so, you know, it's, it's difficult, but I think you know, the technology is there. It works. 
um, but before it becomes a much more commercially viable product, the, the, the cost to produce the hydrogen needs to be coming down significantly more before it actually becomes much more prevalent uh, in Hawaii. One, one other question before we go to the break, and that is, <clears throat> uh, it's appealing to me, but I don't know if it's happening, and that is, uh, so I have solar on my roof, mm -hmm. and I bleed a little wire off the side, and when I come home, I, I, I'm feeding that car. I'm, I'm, you know, off either a battery or the solar. Depends on what time I get home. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get home late. So um, is that popular? Is that happening? Is that something I should consider? Uh, you know, in other words, charging my car at home with solar, you know, instead of going to a charging station. So I'll provide some input and maybe defer to, to Brennan. Um, I think, you know, that's one of the key, you know, attractive benefits for the electrification mm -hmm. of transportation is the, the benefits that it can bring to the grid and to helping integrate renewable energies, like timing, you know, charging electric vehicles, whether it's personal or even buses or commercial vehicles, during the day when there's, you know, peak sun, that's not only, you know, powering your solar, but powering, you know, utility grid scale um, solar plants and, and other uh, locations around the island. And I know, you know, HECO is doing some work to, to best align uh, the strategies as best we can. Well, HECO has been putting in, uh, we call them Hawaiian Electric. Right. Uh, Hawaiian Electric, <laughs> excuse me. We're putting, putting in um, charging stations all over, the, all over Oahu, as far as I know. And you have a regular campaign going on to do that. There must be quite a few by now, no? Yeah, it was actually across all of our three service territories. So mm -hmm. Oahu, Maui, um, Maui County, and Hawaii Island. And so we have 13 currently right now, and we're trying to uh, install, we're in the process of trying to install four um, this calendar year and then another five next year. Uh, and, and, you know, charging, public charging or access to public charging is one of the, the obstacles that we talk about towards EV adoption. You know, we, we discussed the cost of, of a vehicle, the model types, two of which are very important uh, consumer choices that, that people have when uh, they're thinking about buying a type of car. And so those are, that, those are two obstacles, but the other biggest obstacle is access to public charging. And one of the, you know, the majority of people charge at home, let, I mean, get home, plug in their car, uh, let it sit overnight. Oh, you know, 120. Yeah, yeah, 120. Some people choose to get the little faster ones, the 240, but even I, 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 I charge mines with just my regular um, 120 outlet. I'm, I'm sure we Greg do the does same. the same. Yep. Um, you know, so, it's, it's, so charging at home is very easy, but for those who don't have access to home charging, like those like who in live condos, in condos, right? yeah. um, you know, public charging becomes very important. So yeah. they have access to the level two chargers out there in the public but those take a little longer. So the fast chargers that Hawaiian Electric has been installing become a very popular choice for uh, condominium owners as well as um, TNC operators. So, you know, Uber and Lyft, they're always at our, oh, our charging yeah, stations. Oh yeah, that's a whole new thing. Yeah. Yep. I got an ad this morning that uh, was it Uber or Lyft, one of the two of them were gonna offer me a free ride today because it was hurricane. <laughs> that's, they know how to build a brand, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break, guys. We'll come back, I wanna talk about some of the macro factors about legislation, regulation, about encouraging me to go into business and start my own charging station, uh, and where it's all going in the future. And the big bottom line question is, are we going to make it? By absolutely, yes. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Okay. Why not? We'll be right back, and we'll see how much zeal we get in that question. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. So try a little more, hard and every more, let's do what we can. Hi, I'm Ethan Elm, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. We're back, we're live, and um um, we have, um, which I can't meet my own, Brennan Morioka, um, Lauren Reichelt, and Greg Gaug, all committed to electrification of transportation. Um, 
Let's see, Lauren is with uh, Blue Planet. Uh, Greg is with uh, Uluponu. And, uh, and uh, 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 I'm sorry, um, uh, Brennan is, is with uh, Hawaiian Electric, okay? And they're working on this big project here, this celebration coming soon. When is it exactly? It's right now. National Drive right Electric now. Week. Yeah. It's this week. Where do I go yes. and when? And how do I the get there? The remaining events are co on Kauai at Kauai Community College on Saturday morning from 9 to 11 or 9 to 12. We're doing electric vehicle test drive. I can actually drive it? You can actually do drive it. Do you have a license? What was that? Do you need do a need a license, okay, unfortunately. All right. I'll check my license. Um, out, yeah. And then there were also there will also be an event on Saturday in Hilo. Okay. All right. Good. So let's let's talk about the you know the economics. Um, Right now, um, if I buy a car, I've got to spend what somewhere thirty thousand plus. Is that fair to say? The average I, car, new car, is about thirty-five thousand dollars. Thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Okay, and that is at before or after the federal tax credit. So that's for and the average of all cars all is roughly thirty-five thousand. I'm talking about electric cars. Electric cars, it varies. Um, usually more. Uh, well, I mean, it depends, right? It, I would say usually, I think people go usually more because of Tesla, which is obviously a high-end vehicle. Excuse the curve. But if you look at, you know, the new Nissan Leaf starts at $28,000, um, and then there's a $7,500 federal tax credit on top of that. Uh, so, you know, if you, can, if you can utilize that, you're down to, you know, close to $21,000 for good. a brand-new high-tech vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then you're going to save, I would estimate, anywhere from $500 to $1,000 uh, a year in fuel and maintenance costs. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, big question. I, I, me I meant to cover this. Is, is it easier to maintain an electric car than a, than a gas car? Rotate your tires and change your windshield wipers. That's it. That's about it. Yeah. The dealers yeah. must love that. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no further questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, and on top of what Greg said, you know, about the, the federal tax credit and, and reducing the cost of, of like a Nissan Leaf. Uh, Nissan also has a $3,000 rebate this year. Um, and, and oh, so this that, is like what happened last year. Yeah, last year Nissan offered a $10,000 rebate um, for the Nissan Leafs, and that was wildly popular. Um, this year, because the car has improved in, in some of its technologies, um, they've, they've offered a $3,000 rebate. Um, you know, BMW has a $10,000 rebate on the i3. And so, you know, th those are some opportunities that are out there to help reduce the cost, the upfront cost of an electric vehicle. Yeah. And, and if you look at, at some of the, the vehicles that are out there, like Greg said, the, the uh, Nissan Leaf starts at $28,000. The Nissan, I mean, the Kia Soul, electric version of the Kia Soul yeah. starts at about 30000 You know, and then you tack on the federal tax credit and then whatever rebates you can get from the manufacturers or the dealerships. You know, it starts to become very affordable, and then when you start looking long term, you know, at the maintenance costs, as Greg was alluding to, you know, you, you start um, getting a lot more savings on on that. Do do we need a state tax credit like we used to have? Do we need it? It wouldn't it wouldn't hurt. Um, you know, whenever you looked at other jurisdictions, Georgia had a uh, state tax credit that was. Uh, very uh, well utilized, and once the once the tax credit was sunset and taken away, uh, the sales of EVs in Georgia dropped dramatically. Oh, interesting. That's so very the, interesting. So the the price the, and, and the affordability of electric vehicles is very dependent on on uh, you know that that perception that I'm able to afford right. that that upfront cost because mm. um, people don't always you know they they don't always look towards the long term life cycle costs and the savings that they'll have by own by the the full ownership of their vehicle because they, they already have a problem just even putting down the down payment. Yeah. So we, we need to, to, number one, educate them on the long-term um, uh, viability of owning an EV, but also how do we help provide uh, incentives to help reduce the cost right. of that. So, and so yeah, aside from the state tax credit, there are other incentives that I think would really help um, just sort of change people's thought process when they're making the decision. So right now there are some benefits that really help, like um, access to HOV lanes, free parking, and all um, we don't have state that. and county lots. We do have all we that do. right now. We have access to HOV. Mm -hmm. HOV. We have free parking in, uh, in, in all county and state, state, and state and lots. Okay. Yep. Um, and so that's and all the free There's always parking. space in the parking lots. The, the law still requires that anybody has a parking lot of more than X Hundred stalls. stalls has to have some uh, spaces one, for... At least one EV charger. Right. Oh, charger, right, oh, charger, yep. okay. Yep, yep. and um, and parking at the airport as well is free. And those are 
um, they've been around for a while, and so it's really important that we keep those incentives in place and then potentially look to additional incentives until we reach a tipping point where it's no longer sort of a necessary. We didn't reach that point yet, though. Not no, yet. No. Not even Last close. time I knew the numbers, you guys can, all, all three of you at the same time can correct me. <laughs> uh, it was like just over 5,000 electric cars in the state. I'm totally wrong about that, right? Yes. How we're, many? We're, we're now about 7,500. 7,500, yes. okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and what is it increasing per annum? It's yeah. about 25% year-over-year growth versus overall car sales are basically flat. So it's, it's a high growth So It's, uh, it's faster than overall uh -huh. car sales. Yes. Absolutely. So here we are, and uh, God, you know, it's, I, I, always, I always sort of get a shudder when I realize how close we are to 2045. We're close. Um, are we going to make it? Um, are we, are we going to be 100%? Um, and, and, and what do we need to do to get there? Um, if you were, <clears throat> Brennan, I'm going to make you king, okay? <laughs> You're king of Hawaii. Nothing about sovereignty. You're just king of Hawaii. I'm not even king of my home. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is an imaginary discussion. <laughs> what would you do to make very sure that we hit our mark at 2045? Well, one of the biggest drivers that, that uh, we've found in some of our analysis is, is that the availability of public charging um, is going to be the, one of the most important drivers. And so being able to have the ability as a utility to drive some of that initially, um, build the market, because I think part of the, the problem with uh, the charging industry is, is that there is not, even though we're number two in the country in terms of EVs per capita, uh, the number of EVs is still low in comparison to other areas. And so the market in Hawaii. In Hawaii oh, that's too uh, bad. We're supposed said, to be way ahead, right? Well, I mean, we're number two in the country in terms of EVs per capita. But when you com compare the number, the sheer number or volume of EVs to someplace like California or Oregon. Mm, just in absolute numbers. Yeah. In, in sheer pure numbers, you know, it's, it's very difficult for a company to come in and make the kind of investments for charging infrastructure uh, and then wait for a period of time to make some kind of return on that investment. And so the utility can play that role initially, build the market, build the number of EVs that are actually on our roads, and then once we hit a certain saturation, then the private sector can come in and, and fill that the remaining gap. That's a gap. great idea. We can do that? Yes, we are doing yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's, that's part of our, e our electrification of transportation roadmap that we submitted to the PUC that uh, we've been working with them and, and all of our stakeholders, uh, namely Blue Planet and Ulupono Initiative here. Uh, on, on trying to push that forward because a lot of the initiatives that we outlined in our, our roadmap are meant to drive an uptick of electric vehicles, yeah. not just passenger vehicles, but also electric buses as and well. To, sorry, to, to clarify too, when we talk about public transportation, it's across the board. So we're talking workplace charging, um, mm -hmm. which is cr critical. Um, and all this is, is not only meant to ease everybody, but to you know, try to, as we talked about before, help those living in apartments or condos they may not be able to charge when they get home. But if they could charge at work, where they're there for you know, eight hours a day, uh, you, know, you could e easily do that and, and almost never have to worry about you know, charging anywhere else. It's true, you wouldn't need it in the condo. Right. And it's real expensive in condos, so if you yeah. can make it available outside. How are those young fellows who were doing the, uh, oh, gee, I forget the name of the company, the stainless steel, they were building it in Kaka'ako and it had advertisements on it and they put them in shopping centers. And the shopping center owner was so happy to have mm -hmm. them, there would be so no this rent. Is, and so I think you're referring to Volta. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. Thank so you. so you we have, uh, at Ilupono, we've actually invested in three charging infrastructure companies um, to try to help, uh, you know, kind of get not only us here in Hawaii over that, that hump and that hurdle, but also on the mainland. And Volta is one of them. Uh, they're an ad-based company uh, where they, you know, their revenue is driven by ads, so it's no upfront cost to the site owner. Um, and there may be some revenue share in there depending on what's negotiated. Uh, but there's lots of different options, which, which I think is another, you know, kind of, you know, uh, poor information out there. And that's one of the reasons why we have these discussions, these events to share that information in terms of for site owners, for property managers, there's a number of different options for EV charging um, from low cost, you know, nuts and bolts to, you know, the, the Cadillac versions to ad based to, you know, mobile battery based um, to fast chargers to, you know, level two chargers. And they can manage them in a number of different ways, whether they, they cover all the cost or whether they you know, uh, charge the, the uh, user for the electricity or the power or maybe a, 
small margin, a low margin on that. So there's a number of different options for property owners out there. Um, and so part of it is, is up to us to, you know, kind of educate, inform, and, and to Brennan's point, kind so of try to set the market. Testing the market. You're testing what, what's possible. You're investing in these companies. And uh, that's, that's a way of getting, you know, grassroots entrepreneurial development. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of those models will work better. Right. It'll emerge and prevail. Right. And, and I mm -hmm. suspect with Hawaiian Electric, there'll come a time, maybe some tipping point time, where you will say to me, Jay, you want to buy one of these charging station places? You can buy it. And just you know, and, and you can own it, and you can see if you can make a buck on it. Well, if is we that get in the, to, in the if, future, if we get to that point, then we've done our job, yeah. and that means there is a robust market in the, in the electric vehicle sector that. There's so many electric vehicles that people just want to put in chargers because right. they think that they can make some money off of it. Yeah. So yeah, if we get to that point, then I think we've done our job. And, and they can actually be good for property owners too. We did a survey um, a couple years ago on EV drivers. So it tracks traffic. And yeah. about, you know, I think 70 to 75% of respondents said they target specific places where there's charging. So, I mean, if, if you're a, a you know, a restaurant or a you know retail center, and you want to attract this demographic of EV drivers, put in a charging station because people will target that mm -hmm. specifically for the charging, and then you know visit the properties. Part there. of that is the technology, though. If you tell me that I can come to a shopping center, but but I'm not going to get charged or even you know a, a serious charge mm -hmm. or much less a top off, um, you know, in anything short of three hours. Um, which may be the case, in fact, right mm -hmm. now. Uh, that's a lot. That's, that's too much for me. So what's the state of the technology now uh, in terms of fast charging, really fast? Is there somebody coming down the pike? Why don't you invest in that fast charging? <laughs> what about you? What about you? <laughs> really fast. I mean, they, they're, they're working on, you know, there's a, different, a, a number of players in the market that are looking at faster and faster charging. Um, but, I mean, for here in Hawaii, realistically, we're not driving that far. So, right, the, the new LEAF has a 150-mile range. The, the Bolt range is around 240 miles. You could go a whole week and probably never use, you know, 100% of that. So, if, you know, if you, you're going to the grocery store or get a cup of coffee, you stop in, you charge for 20, 30 minutes while you're there, that's probably going to top you off and cover you for, you know, the next few days. Um, you know, in terms of distances, you know, we live on the windward side. You know, we have our LEAF. It's about a 13-mile commute one way. Um, so, I mean, my wife and I could easily go multiple days, stop at the stores on the way home, and, and never have to recharge. Um, you know, from here to Y and I, we have some projects out there. It's about 35 miles one way. So that's 75, 70 miles round trip, which on 150 miles, you know, you should be pretty comfortable with. There's, it's definitely, people like to use that comparison a lot. And well, once, a, once an electric car has the same range as my gas car, mm -hmm. then I'll adopt. But it's really behavioral change. It's yeah. um, shifting your mindset about what charging means and how it fits into your life. It becomes more passive. You don't actively go out and seek, I mean, unless you're already going to go to the grocery store, you actively seek a grocery store with a charger. But you don't have to actively seek a gas station anymore. You can plug in in your garage or you can find one as you go about your normal day. And mm -hmm. so those, the faster the charger isn't necessarily going to make your life any easier because that's not really the charging model anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have an electric car? I do not. Okay. Well, I don't either. Don't feel bad. <laughs> These two guys, I know they do. They do. Uh, although some people have both. A foot, I, a foot I, in I, each I, camp. I still need my truck, which is why you're truck question is not a fair question. <laughs> but I do have a, a nice, transition. I do have yeah. a nice sun blinder on my car though that says my next car is fair an electric enough. vehicle. Fair I'm enough. working on it guys. <laughs> so uh, we're you know about out of time and I wanted each of you to uh, sort of tell me uh, the or tell them, you know, your your thoughts, what what you would leave with people about the mindset, the, the mindfulness about, you know, a, a green energy and about getting electrified in transportation not only for themselves, but for the community, because there's a, you know, however much you enjoy it, however much it saves you money or time, how good you feel about it, it's really the community at the, at the end of the day we're interested in. So uh, let's start with you, Greg. What would you tell the people? Uh, yeah, for the community, I mean, for me, it's really about, I mean, whether you want to, you know, continue polluting the planet or not. Um, I mean, we have, you know, specific laws and rules for polluting and throwing trash on the ground and, you know, every day we get into our gas vehicles, we are knowingly or not polluting the planet. 
which you know arguably is you know, global warming and we're going through lots of hurricanes right now it's all kind of tied together uh, so to help the community help the globe uh, you know let's try to do our best that we can to transition to cleaner energy and electric vehicles is a is a viable option at, at the moment that's going to save us all money ah, all right Brennan what would you tell them? Well, I would, I would just say, you know, the majority of, of households or families over the next three or four years are going to be looking at, at buying at least one new car or getting another car. And whether it's a new car or even a used car, there are um, options of electric vehicles out there for you. And so I would just say, do your homework before you make your next purchase. Um, you know, there are tools out there. We have an EV Watt tool on our web page. Uh, there are other. What is that? EV, EV Watt tool is on our webpage. It, it allows someone to go in and compare the different uh, gas cars uh, to an uh, electric vehicle version, um, where you live, how much you drive, so that you can also get a comparison of how much you might save uh, over the That's life of the, of the car as well. It's so on our Hawaiian, HawaiianElectric.com. Uh, just go look for our, our, our electric vehicle web pages. It's the EV Watt tool is on there. Um, but also, you know, do the test drives. You know, go out to one that, that Lauren is setting up that, that we're going to be also participating in. You know, actually jump in the car, see how it performs. Uh, make sure that it suits your lifestyle. Um, you know, so if, you have, if you're single, you have a family, you know, there are different options for you out there. It's not the old, just the bubble-eyed Nissan Leaf anymore. There's, <laughs> sorry if that's the one. That, um, you know, but I mean, the, the models are changing. There's, there's far more varieties. Um, and, and so there is an electric vehicle that, that suits everyone's lifestyle. And so educate yourself, go do your due diligence, um, see how much more money you can save by owning an EV, uh, and, and then I'm sure you'll make that dive. You don't mind if I have my wife call you, eh? Uh, call me anytime. <laughs> All right. Okay, Lauren, how about you? And don't forget to mention, yet again, the celebration this weekend. Sure. Um, I, well, I'd like to reiterate the things that Greg and Brennan just said. Are you um, trying to tell me you agree with them? Uh, I do, I agree. <laughs> Is there anything they said you don't agree with? I'd have to pick back through it. <laughs> <laughs> Generally agreed. Um, but definitely, um, while while they aren't, while electric vehicles aren't charged on 100% clean energy right now, a, a gas car will never be. A gas car will never get cleaner. It's always going to be using fossil fuels. And an electric vehicle, will continuously get cleaner as our grid continues to get cleaner. And, and so if, I mean, we're sitting here on a day that there's a tropical storm outside. We thought it was going to be a hurricane hitting us dead on, and, and it's been a relatively active hurricane year. Um, and it's going to continue to get worse the longer we continue to pollute. Um, so I think it's really important, and it's really impacting us directly here, um, whether we see it, the connections or not. And so it's, I just would advocate for everyone coming to our events. Um, trying an electric vehicle, you will fall in love with it. Um, we have an EV ride and drive event on Saturday, this weekend, Saturday the September 15th, um, from 9 to 12 at the Kauai Community College Community Farmers Market. Okay, I have two things I want to I wanna say. Something you said made me think of this, is that some people think <clears throat> that um, because we're so small, alone in the Pacific Ocean, we have no effect on climate change. I reject that. Everybody has an effect on climate change, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a should be a global initiative. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is people think, well, we got these bad storms, and there'll be bad ones coming too, um, more bad ones, um, that, that it's too late, you know, that we can't do anything anymore. We're already in another normal um, that, is, that is going to be really deadly. That's wrong too. We still have to try. Mm -hmm. I know you all agree. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and finally, I want to thank uh, uh, Maria um, Tome for setting this up today, as I always do. She's out there somewhere. Thank you, Maria. And thanks to the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And thank you, Greg. And thank you, Brennan. And thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha.